got the time changes and the days mixed up with Australia. So luckily for us, Ian was able to juggle uh, everything, um, but he's only gonna be able to stay with us until half on the half hour. And then he and Juliet have to jump in the car because they're um, committed to another event and we can really appreciate that. So um, again, welcome. And uh, we are so glad that you're all with us. Um, many of you will know that uh, I do come from the Toronto area. Maybe I do say it a little differently, not really sure. But I was also absolutely honored to be on the host organizing committee um, for the Toronto Convention, which was the best convention. Uh, and I'm not just saying that because Ian's in the house, but uh, you know, I still hear from many Rotarians uh, that week was just the perfect weather in Toronto. The program was amazing. The hospitality was great and we had such a good time. And uh, we, we love Ian and we know Ian loves Toronto. So I'm wondering if he can explain this picture that we're gonna put up. There we are. Ian, what can you tell us about that picture? Uh, g'day. <laughs> um, prior to the magnificent convention in 2018 in Toronto, Toronto um, I, and I have been rehearsing Toronto for three years now and I still haven't got it right, but it's probably closer than your g'day. Um, <laughs> there's a, a particular spot on the other side of the, of the water uh, and the harbour where they took some publicity photos. And I thought, given that I do have a strong interest in sporting activity around the world, and I didn't have an ice hockey team to follow. Oh, sorry, you just call it hockey, don't you? Which is, uh, which is a bit strange because the rest of the world calls it ice hockey, but never mind. Uh, the, uh, I thought I'd better get something for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I declared my support for them. And then someone very kindly, I can't even remember who, very kindly gave me that with my name on the back. So I wear it with pride and I have it as my Facebook um, image. And you may be aware that the uh, immediately behind there is the city airport in Toronto. And uh, as I was finishing making a pitch to the, to the people to come, a plane went right behind me and landed in the airport and I thought, they're amazing in uh, in Canada how they can arrange these things. <laughs> Absolutely sensational. But anyway, that's uh, that's how the uh, Maple Leafs or sorry the Leafs uh, jersey comes about. No, it was it was a really good time, and it was actually the HOC committee, um, Michael and and Michelle, that presented uh, presented those to you to um, you and Gord McAnally. So I, I yeah. love that it's your your Facebook profile picture. Uh, three years later, and so uh, I just had to show that tonight. But, you know, I do know you're a huge sports fan, so I really, you know, I know we're in Toronto. We're all diehard Toronto fans, too, but, you know, I hope you pick more winning teams for your other sports uh, enthusiasts because this team hasn't won the Cup since I was two years old. Valerie, you have it all wrong. <laughs> what you do is you pick a team that's been hopeless for ages. <laughs> all you have then is upside. It can only improve. So uh, that hence my support for the Leafs. And they've done a lot better in recent times. And I, I, I am optimistic. Well, we keep saying this is the year, right? So this is the year. Mm. We'll, see, we'll see what happens. <laughs> so before, we'll we move, before we move away from our Toronto experience, I have another questionable picture I want to show you that I think you know, may, may need a little explanation oh. <laughs> as, as to the risks that an RI president or president-elect at this point would take you know. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I've got to tell you that there are some people, and there's one person in particular who was up there with me, who doesn't particularly enjoy heights. I don't mind. Uh, but it was windy. And we thought, what we need to do is, let's face it, the, the tower in Toronto is, is, uh, is one of the, the feature points of anything to do with, uh, with the city. And so we went up to the observation tower and and went outside and walked around. And uh, in reality, <laughs> the rotor actors who were with us, the, the three rotor actors, leaned backwards out over the edge, uh, held up only by that sort of supporting rope. I was not quite that foolish, um, but uh, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful place and the view is spectacular. And right around the other side, you look straight down into the ballpark. It's really a spectacular sight. That's right. 
So for those of you who have just joined us, we're speaking with past Burger International President Ian Risley, and we're having a casual conversation before we get started at the top of the hour. Um, Ian, you had an incredible presidential year in 2017-18. Um, we really appreciate how that schedule was, you know, for a number of years. But what are you doing today to keep you busy? And what is what does COVID <laughs> look like in this in, in Australia? And you know, are you getting out? Well, let's deal with the second part first. We are pleased to say that this morning we have had the 14th straight day of no cases were nationwide, wow. which is really good. It's, it's been a battle to get it down. We've been in lockdown. We've been in a position where we, we can't oh, liaise with people. And no cases. No new cases. No, no cases, yeah. Where, uh, and the, the breakout was in the state of Victoria, where, where I live. And, um, and we got up to, I think on, on one day, there were 700 cases, which was just dreadful. Uh, mostly in the elderly um, senior living sort of area, which is potentially fatal. And so the government took very strong action, extremely strong action. A lot of support for, for business and for people who rapidly became unemployed. But we're through that now. And I think it has been a, a tribute to, a, to all Australians, really, that we've been able to, to respond as positively as, as we have. And the proof of the pudding is that no one is catching the virus now and therefore no one is dying. And I think that's important. That's that. Oh, so Valerie, you also said, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. I have the pleasure of being a trustee of the Rotary Foundation. And in this world of, of COVID Zoom, there's a lot of things happening. And that's why I've had a, a two hour session just now. And I've got something else this evening and I've got something else tomorrow morning and uh, it's most days there's two or three chats with people around the world and that's really good because it means that people like me can can talk to folks um, everywhere and uh, in in days gone by that would have seen us being very much second best well it's how it has to be now so that's really good no it is it is incredible I think uh it's, uh, it's sometimes it's tough and I think everyone on this call can agree it's sometimes tough to find that balance because we're not getting out there and really being able to, uh, to meet and greet each other. Um, and uh, so you're heading into your spring right Ian. Yeah, we're um, uh, in the last month of spring and so the I look out the window here into Juliet's garden which is spectacular, and uh, we've had a fairly damp. Uh, spring and it's now starting to warm up so the grass grows while you're looking at it the vegetables are all flourishing yeah it's a lovely time of year um are you going to speak to us a little bit about your garden in your in your talk because i know that you uh you very much practice sustainable food sourcing oh that's a that's a theory valerie in, in fact if <laughs> if we were to live on what i can grow <laughs> or have been able to grow i'd well it would be the ultimate diet i think but uh, um, in, in fact, we've got, um, what have I got, one, two, uh, 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 10 vegetable plots and, uh, and a citrus grove and so on. Various things come through at various times and it supplements what it is that, that we uh, cook and eat. But what's really good is when you grow, and the best example is maybe corn, maybe tomatoes, tomatoes, the the taste of them is so much better than what you buy in a supermarket or or a grocery or a fruit vendor. It's just so much better, and I love it. And Juliet, at the end of the season, when we've got a, as much as we can possibly handle, she creates um, pickles and chutney with the, the tomatoes and the peppers. Oh, it's wonderful, wonderful. I would imagine that you have more time to concentrate on your garden this year than you have in the past without traveling. Without traveling, true. Yeah, but, yeah. but mind you, that's offset by a huge number of Zooms. So. <laughs> this is very true. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really looking forward to your message tonight. And I know everyone else is. We had registrations of probably just shy of a thousand people tonight to come and hear your message and uh, to wow. participate in our first director's dialogue. So you're, you're right. We are, we're inundated with Zoom and we're sitting in front of our computers a lot, but we're able to reach Rotarians um, with key 
speakers and key points of interest um, that you know we aren't traveling to large events and having the expense and time away from our business and family. So it is it is a great opportunity for us, and uh, so we are really thrilled that you're with us tonight. Um, you know, I don't want to talk too much about your. Um, planting trees initiatives, because I know that that might be something you're going to speak about tonight, but I'm curious um, if you've gone back to see, you know, we talk about planting trees that we will enjoy uh, the fruits of our labor in years to come. And so with your initiatives of, of planting trees, have you had the opportunity to go back and kind of see the results of the change that you've made to the landscape and the environment? Well, it's interesting, Valerie, that um, just about everywhere Juliet and I went, and there were, I remember there were 59 countries in the year in uh, 1718. Uh, we haven't been able to travel that much since, but uh, the response that I received from the Rotarians of the world to the Plant a Tree initiative was fabulous. It was very uplifting. And I know um, 1.2 million Rotarians, therefore 1.2 million trees. We know that it was somewhere north of three and a half million trees. and I've seen some of them, and to be fair to Rotarians, they put in a, a process whereby they guaranteed a water supply and that it would be uh, sustainable. And that was really important. Uh, and it's been lots of places and I've, I've, I love planting things. Uh, I have just managed in recent times to get the dirt out from under my 17, 18 fingernails. But um, <laughs> having said that, uh, we planted trees in lots of interesting places. And um, as I say, I was thrilled with the with the support and the response from the Rotarians of the world. No, I think it was it was a great way for us to look to see what we can do. As you say, get your hands dirty and make go out there and make a difference. I've been speaking to some um, district governors that um, are around the Lake Ontario area, and they're all getting together to do a huge cleanup collaboratively, even social distancing. You know that we can work together to make a, a difference in our communities, and and certainly. Uh, you know, get together and have some fun while we're doing that. So, uh, yeah. again, yeah. Well, it's easy to do as well. And it's not hard to plant a tree if you just exercise a little bit of care. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. And um, and it gives you the chance to chat to folks at the same time as well. Yeah, it's, it's good fun. Good. Are you getting a chance to see your grandchildren? Uh, well, of course, we haven't been able to travel. Uh, mm -hmm. So, fortunately, with the delights of uh, our... Our daughter and her family are more than 25 kilometers from here, so we haven't been able to, to visit. Uh, and our son and his family are in New Zealand, so we haven't been able to visit them either. But that's the advantage of, uh, of the iPhone and all of that sort of thing. Uh, and and kids are, grandkids are funny. They're maybe just turning into teenage years or a bit younger. And uh, when you get in touch with them on, uh, on the iPhone, they say, oh, hi, Papa, hi, Nana. How are you? Yeah, good. Okay, got to go. And off they go and pick up a football or something. But at least you've got the, the chance to see them grow <laughs> and just have a chat, which is you know, crucially important because there's nothing in life better than being a grandparent. Nothing in the world. No, that's awesome. I know it's, uh, thank goodness for technology. We have a daughter who lives in Ireland who got married a year ago next week and we haven't seen her since. So we make a, oh, wow. we make a point to get together and... Uh, and to be able to share that. So, you know, technology is wonderful and where would we be without it during this lockdown? It certainly kept us together and allowed us to come yep. together as we are tonight. So it is the top of the hour. Uh, the real Bruce Goldson, are you gonna take it from here? Yes, uh, thank you, Valerie. And uh, <clears throat> to all those other uh, 230 uh, Bruce Goldsons that we have here, um, I appreciate you all being here with us tonight. And uh, it is especially uh, a thrill to have with us past President Ian, who is going to uh, be talking to us tonight about some of the uh, many initiatives that uh, he's been working on since he was president uh, that regarding the uh, environment. So uh, welcome to uh, our special inaugural director dialogue, past President Ian. We're thrilled to have you with us. So we actually have uh, Dave Underhill here to introduce you just very briefly, Ian. Yeah, it's good to, good to see you. The, the formal introduction is going to be thrown on the cutting room floor. And I'll just what say... What an attractive uh, polo shirt you have on there. Isn't that nice? I, I wore that for you. <laughs> uh, the year I was a governor and, and Ian was a president of RI, he uh, came to us early and challenged us to plant a tree for every member in Rotary. 
as you just heard, that added up to be something like three and a half million trees. And we celebrated that. Ian came to our five district conference and uh, it was a very special mm -hmm. day indeed. The theme for the year was Rotary making a difference and Ian's leadership made such a difference that we're now launching a seventh area of Rotary focus, supporting the environment. And so it is a delight for me to welcome you and to introduce from the Rotary Club of Sandringham, Victoria, Australia, Rotary Foundation trustee and RI past president, Ian Risley. Good day. Well, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's great to be with you. Uh, and I know time is tight, so I'll cut out the palaver except recognizing uh, Director Valerie. Um, I need to start by declaring that I've been a a committed environmentalist for, for a long time. Um, those of us who are conscious of the needs of the environment haven't always been uh, uh, well regarded by mainstream society, especially sometimes various branches of, of leadership. And the uh, expression or description greenie, which I personally embrace, is a pejorative in many cases, a bit like uh, maybe uh, liberal in the US. It's, it's, not, it's a sort of a, a dagger that someone throws at you, but I embrace it. So in, uh, environmental sustainability, um, what does it mean? Well, one definition that I have uh, seen, and I like this one, is the rate of renewable resource harvesting, pollution creation, and non-renewable resource depletion that can be continued indefinitely. And I think that's a, that's a fair definition. And I can't see why anybody uh, really wouldn't want uh, the environment to be sustainable in the way we use it now. Why would you want to run out of something unless you've got something as good or better with which to replace it? And therefore running out of whatever it is doesn't have an adverse impact on some other aspect of your life. And history suggests that action on matters relating to the environment often only comes after a specific problem has been recognized and the cost of the action is seen to be lower than the benefit. So we wait for a problem to occur rather than thinking about the environmental impact of an action before we take it. And, and there's all sorts of examples of this. You may be aware that the, the, the flow, direction of flow of the Chicago River was reversed because it used to go into Lake Michigan and it took all of the, the nasty stuff from abattoirs and, and elsewhere. Um, and it, it became a fetid swamp. And there's a, um, it used to be described in the, the Chicago press as that stinking river. So they reversed the flow of that away from Lake Michigan and it eventually reaches the Mississippi having been, having been sorted out on the way. Uh, and that's just a response to typhoid fever and all of those other problems and illnesses that resulted from this sticking river. Uh, William Blake, the, the poet and, and author, referred to it in his poem to the dark satanic mills of the Industrial Revolution in England, where uh, problems were ignored because of the economic benefits. Um, and I don't know why it is that matters impacting on the environment are not a a high consideration when decisions are made by business and community leaders, but uh, that's to an extent a, a fact of life. Um, and, and we need to be conscious of that um, because, uh, because changes, positive changes to the environment are driven by people. And then they tend not to be politicians, but they tend to be people. So, um, let me, I have been asked to talk about the decision made recently by the trustees of, uh, of the Rotary Foundation and the board of directors of Rotary International to have a seventh area of focus for our, our programs being support for the environment. And of course, I'm, I'm more than happy to do so. And I know that Rotarians in your part of the world have a, a strong interest in the environment and I, I congratulate you on your, or your interest in your commitment. So, to the new area of focus for the environment. The concept of, of areas of focus for, for the activity of the Rotary Foundation came into being about eight or nine years ago when a new grant model was uh, adopted, known at the time as Future Vision. And this was a significant change to how our Rotary Foundation operated. 
and it was motivated by a considerable increase in grant activity. Uh, some grants were quite small and with our need for stewardship and for careful administration, it frankly made no sense to spend almost as much time and effort administering the grant as the grant itself was worth. So in simple terms, the, the Rotary Foundation was a victim of its own success. And Future Vision moved responsibility for smaller grants down to the districts, along with a share of the funds in what became known as district grants. And these still have to adhere to the basic requirements of our Rotary Foundation, but they're under the, the direct control of the districts. And that leaves the major project activity, the global grants. And it was considered by the trustees at the time that Rotary needed to concentrate on uh, our significant activity into areas of focus. And they decided on six and you're aware of what they are. And apart from a couple of modest alterations recently in the, in the name of these areas of focus, they've remained unchanged since Future Vision came into being. So what sort of activities are covered by these areas of focus? For example, what does, what does basic education literacy means or mean? And each area of focus has, has a statement approved by the trustees which outlines and, and controls the things that projects can cover uh, under each area of focus. Each area has a manager and staff who are very experienced in project development in that activity. And regarding the environment, there have been a number of projects undertaken already under the original six areas of focus. One figure I, I saw recently uh, told me that global grants valued at somewhere north of 18 million US dollars have been completed to date on environmental activity, mostly in the water, sanitation and hygiene uh, area. So how did we come to have this seventh area of focus? I think it's fair to say that uh, Rotary has not formally paid sufficient attention to this area of, of project activity over the years. Paulo Costa of Brazil, one of my genuine Rotary heroes, was a pioneer in 1990-91 when as Rotary International President, he introduced the Preserve Planet Earth program. Long, Long-term Rotarians will recall that. But since then, a Rotary leadership at all levels has, has mostly ignored the environment, I think it's fair to say. And as a person with a lifelong interest in these environmental issues, I was keen to encourage clubs and districts to do something to support the environment when I was president in the, the great year of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, 2017-18, culminating in, you're right, Valerie, the greatest convention in the history of Rotary in Toronto in 2018. And my simple challenge to Rotarians was, as I said before, very well received, because after all, who doesn't like trees? Who doesn't like trees? They're beautiful things. As someone once said, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is today. And I endorse that entirely. You can't put it off just because uh, you won't be around when it's at its, its peak. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So my successor um, as president, Barry Rasson, also encouraged environmental programs. Uh, so we, we established some momentum, it's fair to say. And then in October last year, the chair elect of the Rotary Foundation, Ravi Ravindran, uh, proposed to the trustees, after talking to some of us, that we include the environment in our area of focus activity. And I need to say that Ravi's leadership in this matter is absolutely crucial and critical to making it happen. And the trustees unanimously agreed to the concept, but the question still remained, how? How do we uh, introduce environmental projects formally into our system? So the trustees formed um, a committee by another name, otherwise known as a task force, and asked it to consider the options and to make uh, recommendations. Uh, Brenda Cressy uh, was one of the members of the task force, also a couple of other trustees, a rotor actor and an RI director, all part of the, of the uh, task force who incidentally met to discuss communication immediately before I came on to chat to you. Our 
meetings, of which there were three, considered, and a lot of Zoom activity, considered three options. Uh, first one is to incorporate the environment in the existing areas of focus, the existing six, uh, which we refer to as the easy option. Uh, the second is to amalgamate two of the existing areas of focus, introduce a new one for the environment, therefore leaving six. And the third option is a standalone area of focus for the environment, making a total of seven. We had excellent staff support, and we do have at Rotary International a, a wonderful staff, very dedicated, very hardworking. Uh, so we, we took uh, submissions from university experts, interested Rotarians, uh, including SRAG, the Environmental Sustainability Rotary, Rotarian Action Group, who are, again, dedicated to this kind of activity. We had much discussion and debate, strong discussion, but polite. And finally, everyone agreed, the staff and the task force members agreed that we should add a new area of focus for the environment, making a total of seven. The trustees and then the board also unanimously accepted that recommendation. So from the 1st of July next year, the Rotary Foundation will accept project in this area for global grants. And my friends, let me tell you that I believe this is an historic decision for Rotary, historic. Each area of focus has a statement of explanation, as I mentioned earlier, which which covers those activities that will be accepted in, in grants in this area, and just as importantly, probably, those that will not. A very important document uh, provides guidance to Rotarians on ways to protect, preserve, and conserve the environment. And again, we had lots of debate about what should be in that and what should not. And the statement will be released, I think, uh, early January. And when it's available, I, I would encourage interested Rotarians to obtain a copy of that statement and to review it really carefully because it can be a useful guide to the project activity that we're undertaking. Uh, the communication about this new area, both to all Rotarians and to those outside Rotary, is very important. And again, a detailed plan is being drawn up by our communication team in Evanston, and that was one of the things we were talking about a little earlier today. Uh, further, the new area of focus will form an important part of the training to be provided to incoming district governors at the virtually uh, International Assembly next, next February. This is, without trying to overstate it, this is, I believe, the most significant change in project activity for our Rotary Foundation in a very long time. The groundswell of interest, even before the trustee and board decisions, was substantial. Frankly, it was huge. And the passion of Rotarians was clear. I received uh, 20 emails a day for, for months supporting this concept. Uh, I think it's called lobbying in a, polit in a political sense, but it was showing enthusiasm. So that's great. And naturally, this uh, innovation will uh, increase the profile and the public recognition of projects done by Rotary. And there is a belief which I happen to share that having the capacity to undertake projects uh, which enhance the environment will make Rotary more relevant and more attractive to younger Rotarians and Rotaractors. Thus hopefully improving member uh, satisfaction and member retention. And we do have a member retention problem in Rotary. But in addition, it might encourage non-Rotarians to consider joining us. So it could be a membership development tool as well. We must remember, remember that there are many people who are not quite so young, dare I say it like me, who believe that Rotary's work supporting environmental projects will be very worthwhile service. It is not just the younger people who care for our planet. And again, clearly um, a seventh area of focus will increase grant activity and therefore put more pressure on the funds available in the Rotary Foundation World Fund to support global grants. Already the World Fund is having difficulty, <coughs> excuse me, 
in, the, in satisfying the demand of Rotarians for global grants. And that's why it's vital that Rotarians maintain or, or even increase their generous giving to our Rotary Foundation. So to conclude, let me refer you to President Holger's theme for this year, Rotary Opens Opportunities. And working on projects in support of our environment is certainly one way to do that. I encourage Rotarians everywhere to consider supporting the environment as a place to put your project activity. Our planet and its people will thank you for it. Um, that's about the time I think um, Bruce and others that I, I said I would speak for, but if there's any questions, I'd be delighted to respond. Um, thank you, Ian, for your comments and, um, and, and your pioneering of, of this, you know, initiative of environment initiatives that you, you speak of all the time. Uh, we have a few questions, if you have a few minutes. I just want to let everyone know sure. that Ian has been very generous of his time to be with us. We did uh, kind of mess up, you know, uh, the time change and the wrong dates. So Ian has to leave on the half hour. And I want to be really careful of that because he has another engagement that he and Juliet need to get to. So we have a question, and I think you might have touched on some of it, Ian, um, when you were speaking about um, the demand on the World Fund and the, man, the, the demand on new um, grant activity around this new area of focus. Will there be any unique requirements in connection with the environmental grants? Is that something that's being discussed, being worked on? Uh, I think a, a straightforward response, Valerie, is, uh, is no because the seventh area of focus simply gives Rotarians uh, a broader sphere in which to undertake their project activity. So there will be the requirement as there always is for um, a needs assessment for uh, sustainability being obvious in the project and that kind of thing. But uh, there, there won't be any special requirements just because it's the environment. But of course, as I mentioned, it does of necessity place more strain on our, uh, our available funds through the World Fund. That's why we're, we're hopeful that uh, we will increase our fundraising, both inside Rotary and externally, and we will have a major gift initiative for that area of focus, and uh, Brenda Cressy will be running that. So um, we're optimistic that the additional funds that will be raised as a result of the, uh, the new area of focus will offset the increased demand for World Fund matching. Thank you. I know we're working towards what it's going to um, look like and the rules of, of grant activity, but we're being asked if there's any or the timing on some graphics so that we can start to really promote this in our communications as well. We want to have one uh, universal graphic or, or brand available for this. That's Valerie, a really good point. And again, we chatted about that uh, on the Zoom call this morning. It's both interesting, gratifying and disturbing the number of different graphics that I've seen <laughs> around the Rotary world in recent times, because bear in mind, this starts on the 1st of July next. So at the moment, we have six areas of focus. The vast majority of things that I've seen suddenly have a, a tree in the corner and we have seven. Uh, the communication plan that is being devised by uh, David Alexander and his, his crew in Evanston and in conjunction with our task force and others is looking at this and there will be a, a, a specific, um, I was gonna say logo, that's not true, a graphic that relates to this so everyone can use. But uh, you've reminded me and I need to make sure that I check with him how that's going. Great, um, you know, the one thing I probably reflect on, and many of us probably do, is that this year, 2020, is, is going to go down in history. And, and in fact, we're living history that will be talked about long after we're gone. Um, you know, we've seen civil unrest and extreme weather events, and it seems to be becoming the norm. And that, of course, ties into our disaster response fund. Um, how do you see this affecting some of the area of focus as well? Is there a tie-in? There's obviously a relationship with all the areas of focus. But the, sure. the weather patterns that we're seeing are just devastating around the world. Yeah, um, the, you're a Canadian, so, so um, you may have seen Queen Elizabeth a couple of decades ago when she described a particular year when 
Princess Di died as uh, Annus Horribilis. I think worldwide, this has been one of those. Just, it's an amazing number of things that have gone wrong in our world this year. Uh, but the good news is that come 1st of January, we're into 2021. So we have to think continuously and positively. That, that's really important. Um, I'm, um, I'm a believer that there will be ongoing demand from Rotarians for, for work. And there will be a relationship, of course, between the disaster relief and the activities undertaken in the environment area of focus. But there is in all of the other areas of focus and disaster as well. There, there are problems with uh, maternal and child health. There are problems in community development. There are problems in, in uh, health. There's all sorts of uh, education, all sorts of things that are impacted by the disasters that we've seen. And I know in North America, you've had oh, a huge amount of problems. I've got to say, we've had a, more than our fair share down here as well. We had fires, we had floods, we've still got drought in lots of areas. It's not coincidental that um, these occur at a time when we've got El Nino and then La Nina, but there has to be some relationship with, with the change in our climate. I don't think Rotarians can do anything directly about climate change because that's beyond our capacities. We can certainly have a significant impact on um, mitigating the impacts of climate change and the way in which it, it happens and the way it impacts upon communities. And that's where Rotarians, we star because we're part of a community. And so we really work in our direct community as well as the worldwide community. Thank you. Now, just to, under your leadership as well, you had a presidential conference on environmental sustainability in Vancouver mm -hmm. in 2018. Yep. And I'm just wondering mm -hmm. if you've seen any positive specific results of that conference, or is there any more kind of calls to action that you'd like to give this group? Yeah, uh, just by way of background, uh, Valerie, um, uh, and I don't want to sound like a like I'm the pioneer because I'm not, but uh, I'm concerned and interested. And when you said before, and you were kind enough to suggest I provided some leadership, it's leadership everywhere, because I look at my fellow trustees who embraced this unanimously. Mark Daniel Maloney and the board embraced it unanimously. So there's a groundswell from the Rotary leadership, and that is important. Um, in regard to the, the presidential um, discussions or conferences, yeah, the very first one in the beautiful city of Vancouver was on environment and how that related to peace. So environmental sustainability and the impact it has on peace. Wonderful speakers uh, and lots of interesting ideas that have flowed for that. And I know that there are Rotary clubs and districts around the world who are doing environmental activities as a result of, of attending that. And there was over a thousand uh, Rotarians and interested people along at that event. It was fabulous. Mm. You know, in this time that we're meeting in this virtual capacity, uh, and especially in North America, where membership is an issue, we are looking at all new kinds of club models and cause-based clubs are really becoming very popular. So, you know, um, clubs where the members are certainly focusing on on a specific area of service or, or, or focus. So we are seeing uh, a lot of interest and we're gonna speak about it a little bit tonight, um, unfortunately, after you leave us, about cause-based clubs around environmental yep. issues. And I'm just wondering if you have any experience, if you've seen some of these and if you could share any thoughts. Uh, I uh, thank you. That's a really good issue on which uh, I should make my final comments. And that is that uh, we've had for a hundred and whatever it is years now, one capacity for being a Rotarian, for being a member of a Rotary club. Nothing wrong with that. It served us extremely well over a period of time. There are some people who are more inclined towards one area of project activity than all of the areas of project activity. And so they have, let's call them specific purpose type Rotary clubs. I think that's fabulous. I really like the, the concept of part of the Rotary world part of the movement isn't that great, but concentrating their project activity in one particular area of activity. And, and you know that there are 
there are many of them. There, there's the, uh, the child slavery um, group that are, again, extremely effective, concentrating on one thing. I actively encourage that. I think it's marvelous. And I think that will be a trend that will, that will, um, will increase like a tsunami in our organization and, and long may it flourish. Excellent. Well, you know, Ian, I'm conscious of the time. We're going to let you go. We can't thank you enough for being with us. And please give our love to Juliet and, uh, you know, hope to see you again real soon. Thank you. Safe travels. Well, thanks, Valerie. I appreciate the invitation, first of all. And I congratulate you on, on this initiative, which is really good. It's a, it's a great thing to do because we have to be adaptable. Rotary hasn't always shown itself as being the most uh, flexible and adaptable organization over the last century or so. And I, I believe we, we have um, benefited in a perverse way mm -hmm. from the, the COVID because it means we've had to look at other methods of staying in touch with folks, just like you're doing uh, tonight. So I congratulate you on that and uh, wish you well for the rest of the discussion. I wish I could be with you, but sadly, as you know, I have to bolt. And I think okay. Juliet's ripping the car. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. And we'll see you very soon. Thanks, Ian. Thanks, Valerie. Thanks, folks. Take care. Cheers. So I want to thank, you know, I just want to thank you all for being here and thank Ian for joining us for that casual conversation at prior to the top of the hour. So as I mentioned in full transparency, we added that to the program because of a technical error made on time zones. But I think it really worked out. Maybe it might be something that we continue to do because if we can fit question and answer in during the dialogue as well. I think it flows really well. So maybe we've started a trend. I don't know. Um, I'd also like to thank each of you for being with us tonight. We had, as I mentioned, uh, probably close to a thousand registrations. And as you can see, we are recording this session so that can be shared uh, going forward as well. Cause this is, this really is a new way of gathering. Um, and so when you registered, I also um, thank the team for uh, having the foresight to put in the, uh, the question uh, to you, what do you want our future uh, sessions to be held on because really, you know, we want to provide you with uh, powerful speakers and powerful subject matter. So we're going to endeavor to bring you those topics and speakers of interest. But I'm also, you know, really understanding that we need to have, have that call to action. It's wonderful to come together and to have these conversations, but, you know, we're all inspired to go off and do what we can to make a difference in our clubs and communities. So we're really gonna to try to make sure that we give you a call to action along with the inspirational speakers that we have. So again, we're thrilled to bring you this program tonight on our seventh area of focus. Uh, this topic is important. It affects us all, the world we live in and the world we want to leave behind for the next generations because we all have a role to play. Some of us may take on a huge role, We've got some people on, on that are coming on to speak to us from Environment Sustainable Rotary Action Group, and you can see how we can get involved in a big way. But you know what? We've been speaking about it tonight. There's so many things that we can do in our small way. As Ian's leadership showed us, get that dirt under your fingernails, go out and plant some trees. Um, we can each make a collective difference. Um, you know, just, just it's kind of funny that we ended up uh, on this topic and with Ian as our speaker because this month, we were actually supposed to be in Anchorage, Alaska, with Ian as our keynote speaker at our summit, uh, which was uh, called Life on Land, um, which followed the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So unfortunately, we were not able to be in the incredible state of Alaska for all its beauty and welcoming people. And I had an opportunity to visit there on a site visit and uh, incredibly sad that we're not, we're not there. Uh, but instead, we're safe at home. But I want to recognize the Rotarians in Alaska who were so keen to uh, host us. They were looking so excited to have us with them. And I hope that we can be with them uh, soon. It is an incredible state. I had the opportunity of being there in the middle of February and people laugh and go, why would you go in February? Well, you know what, if you're going to experience winter, you may as well experience winter. And uh, we were there actually for the dog races, the beginning of the dog races, and we had got to go snowmobiling. But Honestly, the people in Alaska were, were very genuine. And again, I hope that we can join them um, at a different time. We felt we needed to bring this forward as our first director topic um, because we know that Rotarians are passionate about this subject. And we know that environmental issues, as Ian was saying, are critical to millennials and Gen Z. Um, 
it, it, it's, it's something that is a conversation that needs to happen. And I think um, organically, we will grow our membership around these cause-based clubs and just having this area of focus, which is, which is so crucial to us. As I said, you know, when I was speaking to Ian, this year is, is gonna go down in history. Um, and I think that, you know, not only are we seeing extreme weather um, and civil unrest in our countries, but we're seeing a lot more health issues related to climate change that are on the rise as well. And, and the demand for environmental accountability is, is certainly in demand. Um, so as the trustees continue to develop the details around this new areas of focus, we know, as Ian said, Rotarians haven't waited, haven't waited because we have been, you know, doing our projects with a view to uh, environmental uh, components and sustainability. Um, and as he mentioned, in the last five years, we're actually able to see that in each of our areas of focus, the environment has been present in some shape or form, and it's amounted to almost $18 million. So, you know, that's really exciting. But as Ian said, and it is Foundation Month, it's important that we continue to give to the annual fund and grow that world fund so that we can do these projects. Um, we're kind of a, 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 pro, a, 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 a example of our, our own success that we've depleted the world fund. And so we really, we really need to make sure that we can continue to give so that we can uh, have these funds available. As we know, it's gonna be, we're gonna see a, an influx of, of really powerful grant activity that I think is gonna make a big difference. And you know, so many of our grant activities have that other component as, as we'll speak about. Um, when we go and we do a water and sanitation uh, and hygiene project, we know that we're seeing examples of planting fruit trees for the future and for an income source for communities. So these are the sort of things, the combined areas that we've seen that are happening. And I know that that's gonna continue to happen in our existing six areas, of focus, but it's going to be exciting to see where we go um, going forward. So um, now I mentioned water sanitation and hygiene or WASH because we love our acronyms. And this is an example of a Rotary Action Group. So I just wanted to um, highlight this. I know we have a lot of people on the line and I don't want to take for granted that people know what a Rotary Action Group is or a RAG. So Rotary Action Groups are independent Rotary affiliated groups made, made up of people from around the world who are experts in a particular field. And these action groups offer their technical expertise and support to help clan, club, clubs plan and implement projects. And this may include connections to community partners and funding or assistance with grant applications because they offer that, they offer that community connection. They have colleagues all over the world that can um, speak to the projects that we're working on with technical assistance and, and sometimes even assist with some funding partners. So they are a huge resource. And, and as I mentioned to Ian, when we were talking about that question in the chat about focused rotary clubs and action rotary clubs based on a particular focus, especially in the environment, I believe these rotary action groups are gonna play a huge role in supporting and directing these cause-based clubs. So tonight I wanted to focus on one particular action group and Ian mentioned them in his comments and that is SRAG or the Environment Sustainable Rotary Action Group. So we are, I'm gonna show a, a video right now just to introduce SRAG. So if we can have that video shown. G'day, I'm Ian Risley. Let me thank SRAG and Rotary Clubs around the world for every tree you planted this year. This has allowed Rotarians to meet my 1.2 million tree challenge and to commit to environmental sustainability. The trees you planted will provide nutritious food for humans and animals, sustainable building materials and fuel, and canopies in your urban areas to cool, reduce energy use and absorb pollution. Your trees will increase groundwater recharge, preventing runoff and soil loss. It'll create wildlife habitat, produce oxygen, use carbon dioxide and improve health, slow global warming and refresh the spirit of your communities. Coming together to plant trees, you have created valuable partnerships and connections 
in your community and around the world. Because of your work, the resources you've enjoyed will be available for future generations. Thanks for making a difference. And keep planting trees. Even though the 2017-18 challenge has been completed, the planet thanks you, and so do I. It's great to be out here getting some uh, planting. Ten years down the road, once these things grow up, we're going to have a beautiful new entrance. My little dirty hands in the dirt here as I put this, put this, plant this little tree is something that causes me to be connected to everybody around the world and making our planet a better place to live. It really has been a joy to go back to some of those places 15 years later and just see how much of an impact we've made in those forests. This helps our world and if we don't do anything, nobody does anything, then we're not going to be here anymore. This is a global initiative so it's really cool to be involved globally and actually make a difference in the world and in your community. In the short term hanging out with other Rotarians is one of my favorite things to do. There are a bunch of neat people and you should come join us. And in the long term, I look forward to coming back here in 10 years and seeing what a beautiful park this turns into. Hello, I am Kenneth Mugisha, the District Governor, District 9211, Uganda and Tanzania. Let's put a break to the environmental suicide that we are steadily committing by using trees and sustainably. We, as Rotary in Uganda and Tanzania, seek to join in reducing the waste of our forests in the Mission Green campaign. This will be the end of one disease, but a new chapter in Rotary. A chapter where sustainability is front and center. Sustainability has become the watchword of Rotary because we want the good to last. We want our world to be better, not just here, not just for us, for everyone for generations. In any river, in one single mile, we can, we can have between one to two metric tons of garbage that is trapped. And uh, the purpose of doing river cleanups is to raise awareness in the community that all the garbage that we throw on the streets eventually will end up in the river and from the river goes all the way to the ocean. I went to Puyo, Ecuador, um, and uh, we are in the middle of the jungle, and uh, our guide was saying, look Salvador, there's absolutely no garbage here. Everything is pristine, but you can, let's keep on going. We don't need to stop at this area. I said, stop, give me a second. In an area where there's nothing but uh, a small bush, uh, the, the size of, of my waist height, I went in there and every single bush had plastic bags wrapped around the trunk. In that bush, we collected a good um, three to five bags of garbage in that batch that looked pristine. Through, through, from, a, from far, you could see that there was absolutely no garbage. But once you went in there and looked down, reached down to the bottom of the bush, every single bush had plastic bags wrapped around it. We have volunteers from all different backgrounds, uh, firefighters, um, we have uh, law enforcement, we have teachers, students from the universities, rotor actors, interactors, Rotarians, civilians. Um, many Rotary clubs in different countries participated. And together we collected over 100 metric tons of garbage. Through ASRAG and ESRAG, we continue to, to share that information and inspire more, more clubs. And eventually we may have, you know, river cleanup projects all over the world. So I'm asking you to be the inspiration to move Rotary from reaction to action, to take a hard look at the environmental issues that affect our health and our welfare, to do what we can to make a difference. Sustainable service means looking at everything as part of a larger system, as part of a larger global ecology. It means helping to build stronger and more resilient communities. It means doing everything that we can to make sure that the good we do now is leading to better lives tomorrow and beyond. So I'm asking you to be the inspiration in your clubs, in your districts, 
to show them what we can do, what we can be, to be the inspiration to your countries, to your communities, by coming together, taking action to create lasting change. I'm asking you to be the inspiration because together we can, we will inspire the world. And I thank you for everything you're gonna to do to make our world a better place next year. Thank you. Thank you. And now we have Jenny Lewis with us from SRAG to lead us through uh, a presentation. Thanks. Welcome, Jenny. Thanks, Valerie. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm thrilled to be here. I, um, I, I might adopt past President Ian's uh, term of being a lifelong greenie, so definitely thrilled to, <laughs> thrilled to be here and, and chat with you all today. Um, my name is Jenny Lewis. I'm based in Brooklyn, New York, so District 7230, a proud, uh, proud member of Dist District 7230. Um, so here to talk to you today a bit about SRAG and, and extend on the conversation that Valerie and Ian had as well as you know, tell you a bit about what we do in our, our regional chapter. Um, as, as Ian mentioned, um, we, as part of SRAG, were a, a component of the task force that, um, that was, and uh, Bruce, if you don't mind, uh, mind just uh, next slide, please. Um, we are, we're a part of the task force to uh, talk about the new area of focus. And it's, it's amazing to be here today on the other side of that to say, we're here, we have the new area of focus and we're at a point where we're ready to, to move forward. Um, so the objectives for, for SRAG as, as an organization, and SRAG, as Valerie mentioned with our, our action groups, they are global organizations. Um, so if we think about the objectives for, uh, for SRAG, it's you know, focusing on things like planning and implementing service projects, building awareness, uh, as and, and past president Ian had mentioned this, not just within the Rotary community, but also, also outside of the Rotary community as well, building that awareness. Um, we also want to help build out global and local networks. So how are, how are folks interacting within their local communities? As an example of that, partnering with businesses in the community that might be connected to environmental tasks. And we want to inspire folks to take action. There are many service projects that are already going on that have, you know, have an environmental component, but how do we extend those to grow to larger environmental projects? But then also look at things um, to say, well, how can our other rotary projects be more sustainable? Uh, things like, you know, lanyards and plastic uh, name tag holders. Do we really need the plastic name tag holders or could we go without them or maybe we recycle them? Them at the end of the meeting. Um, and uh, next slide, please, Bruce, if you don't mind. And, um, you know, finally, helping all that support on the uh, club and district and the international level. So I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about how we do that and uh, split that into some regional chapters. Uh, next slide, please. So the chapter that, that I'm a part of is the Eastern North America Regional Chapter. We're named Eastern North America Regional Chapter, but it is a bit, um, it's a bit uh, of a misnomer because as you can see on our map here, this, is, this represents our membership for our regional chapter. We are currently 163 members that spread across 50 Rotary districts. We, um, we you know, love to have all of our spread across these countries because it's what is really interesting is that each different area has a completely different part of their environment. Just in our Caribbean countries alone, even, even within one Rotary district in the Caribbean, they they all have different in different environmental thoughts. Um, one of one of those districts came together and they actually 
they did an analysis of the biology across all the different islands and found that they they shared one uh, one flower across the different islands and then they made that flower their their district symbol. So I think it's just an interesting story that even though we're we're technically one region, uh, we're we're quite spread from a diversity perspective. Um, we also you know, tend to collaborate across. Um, the different districts and, and regions. So within the region, we'll have chapter meetings and share ideas about projects. And we're also working to plan out projects that are, are cross district and cross region. As an example, um, we're looking at, at the Susquehanna River, which is on the on the east coast of the U.S., and found out actually last night in a chapter meeting that it um, a, a group in upstate New York has started a project working on the river. So we're actually going to look to see how can we extend that project down the length of the river into the Chesapeake Bay. Right, uh, next slide, please. You know, when we think about how to look at projects, how to, you know, how to figure out what to do and what can we do as clubs and also individual ro Rotarians, something that we talk really frequently about within the SRIDE community is Project Drawdown. Uh, project Drawdown is a framework and if you go to their site, there are dozens of ideas of things that you can do, actions that you can take as an individual or things that you can do on a community level. And what we like to suggest to folks who might be interested and say, hey, you know, how can I start? How can I, how can I get involved? It is to start to look and create a, a top 10 framework for your, for yourself. And then, um, you know, maybe you can extend that to your club or your, or your district and, and get to a broader team. Uh, next slide, please. So here, and this is this is um, it's a list that I use so often uh, from Doug White, a colleague of mine in the regional chapter. It, the idea is that we look at the project drawdown ideas, and out of the many many ideas, find things that we can take action on ourselves. Um, you know, one of my personal's hot favorites is composting. As, as an example, it is my number one thing that I that I focus on. Um, I I was doing compost drop off in New York City and one week decided to to weigh the bag I was carrying of, of the compost. Just out it was like I kind of was like, oh this kind of feels heavy. I wonder I wonder what this is. 16 pounds of compost is is what it was. And that was two weeks for two adults. Now imagine what that would extend to be if it were a larger family or you held onto it for longer. And what does that multiply to over time? How can we look at our own individual actions on a day-to-day -day basis and say, well, what are what are some small things that I can change? Are there you know, reusable towels that I can have in my kitchen, or, you know, maybe I can convert one or two or three meals a week to, to work off of a plant-based diet. Everybody is going to have a different, um, different list. But what I love about the Project Drawdown solution ideas is that it gives you a guidepost to, uh, to, you know, make that, make that determination and find places within your life that you can make change. Uh, we'll go to the next slide, please. So SRAG worked with the, UN, the UN Environmental Program to actually create a handbook for clubs and districts. So if you're interested in starting to bring these ideas and, and theories into your club, I really encourage you, and we'll, we'll get this link to you in the chat, um, but we'll, I definitely encourage you to download this from the SRAG website. It gives you a guidebook of how you can bring these ideas into your club projects. So really great read. Definitely encourage everybody to download that and start thinking through. And next slide. A couple of ideas here, as I mentioned, with Adopt a River or organizing a cleanup. And uh, next slide, please. All right, and couple more, a couple more items here, just project ideas I want to throw out to you before we head out. Uh, one is for street cre street tree care, a personal favorite of mine um, in New York City, and can't um, can't plant a tree at, at will in too many places. So we focus on um, we focus on you know doing care around the trees. Um, and next slide, please, Bruce. Awesome. And composting we talked about, and I think for folks outside of the city who are able to, you know, an idea would be to, to get your own compost bin. I even saw some cool ones lately that actually plant down into the ground instead of sticking up. And one last project I want to leave you with, if you if you wouldn't mind the next slide, Bruce, is, is a CFC collection project that we're doing within SRAG. We're partnering with an organization called Trade Water 
who has a way to process safely used um, Freon cylinders. So they take those, they process them safely, and it gets it, it gets it out of the environment. And we've actually started doing this collection across the country. Um, one of one of the clubs in uh, Virginia, uh, in this in the region, was actually able to to be the first to to collect cylinders. So if you're interested in doing some cylinder collection in your area, definitely reach out to me. I can I can put my email in the chat for folks who might want to learn more. Um, and I think that's that's all I have for slides. I know Cecily is going to speak next a little bit about um, eco clubs, but I would love to um, love to talk more about anybody who's interested in learning more about SRAG. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Uh, next slide, please, Bruce. So as Jenny said, so importantly, we can't keep serving humanity if we don't also focus on supporting the well-being of planet Earth. And as an innovative club advocate, part of a team working with 28 and 32 to start new innovative Rotary clubs, I'm hoping listening to Ian and Jenny tonight has inspired you and challenged you to think about creating an eco club in your own district. Next slide, please. Anyone of any age can be interested in the environment, but for an organization that often struggles to bring in a younger demographic, I want to share a few stats from the United Nations. Close to half a million youth around the world have taken action on climate change. 84% of surveyed young people agree they need more information on preventing climate change. 89% of youth say young people can make a difference. Only 9% of youth are very confident the world will act quickly enough to address climate change. Youth constitute the majority of the population in many countries and have an increasingly strong social and environmental awareness, which they are very willing and able to get on social media and use and make their voices and power known. So these are great people to think about bringing into Rotary to work with the environment. Next slide, please. And what an invitation we have for anyone interested in an eco club. Create a connection with the natural world and an energetic group of professionals who are committed to action in the ongoing quest to sustain our planet while having fun in the process. Contribute through hands-on stewardship and service projects coordinated with existing local, national, and international organizations. We can say to people, you care about the environment. Join our international organizations that gives grants, that has an action group that can advise, educate, and coordinate some of your efforts and make a lasting change. What a wonderful opportunity for all of our districts because some of our environmental needs are universal. Some of our regions have specific needs, but all of them can have a real impact. So next slide, please. Here is an example of just a few of the eco clubs that are out there. People are doing this already. I saw in the chat that there is a meeting later on from a eco club in British Columbia. So I wanna leave you with, to think about in your district as a satellite club, as a new club charter, creating an eco club. And you're gonna get an invitation to a January event from the ICA team with more specific hands-on how-to information to start an eco or other cause-based club in your district. So start thinking about it now and come and join us in January to get more detailed information. And let's see how many eco clubs we can charter before the end of this Rotary year. Thank you so much. Thanks, Cecily. Well, I think, I think that was the challenge, you know? So we laid down, we laid down a challenge. So we are coming to the top of the hour and uh, I'm just so thrilled. I hope you have been uh, informed and inspired. I know that when it comes to subject matters such as the environment, we have a large varying degree of knowledge. And I will tell you, I am not at the top of that knowledge tree. I just know that it's something that's really important to a conversation. And I see Christopher Puddock on the line and then some other support from, from SRAG. So, you know, they're the experts and I'm so thrilled that they were able to be with us here tonight. And I know that Jenny and Christopher and others will take your emails and certainly look forward to collaborating um, with you. And, you know, 
the part of the evening was to really kind of show you what we can do and what we can make a difference in our in our clubs and in our communities. And as, as Cecily said, we're already seeing environment club uh, club activity, cause-based clubs. I know her, her district's working on one. I see Sherry Chamberlain has a meeting coming up tonight in a couple hours. The beauty of Pacific time versus uh, Eastern time, we can still, you know, attend meetings uh, uh, after this meeting. I know I have one at eight o'clock. I'm just going to be honest with you. So I just want to thank everyone for being with us tonight. And uh, uh, I really, I know he's not still on the line, but I want to give a big shout out to Ian for being with us. Cecily and Jenny, thank you so much for bringing the information to us. Um, it was huge. And um, we want to uh, let you enjoy the holidays. I know we kind of talked about doing this every month, but many of us, are, our calendars are full and December seems to be that opportunity where maybe we can find a bit of balance and have a break. So if, uh, if Bruce can share our slide, we want you to enjoy the holidays in December. We're not gonna have a director's dialogue in December, but we are gonna have one on July 14th. And we're really, really excited to have past international president Barry Rassen with us. You know, we spoke a little bit about tonight that the seventh area of focus is new. We don't have all the details yet. It's still being worked on. And it's so exciting that everybody wants to, you know, grab it and take it and run with it. Um, you know what? Elevate Rotaract is similar. I'm getting a lot of questions as an RI director. What does this mean? What, is, what does it mean to elevate Rotaract? What's it going to look like? How can we prepare and align our current clubs and future Rotaract clubs around some of this, this discussion? And um, I'm so thrilled that, um, that Barry Rassen is gonna join us in, in, February, in January and uh, he's going to give us a dialogue and he's gonna answer a lot of our questions. So I invite you to give some thought, give some questions, uh, bring your rotor actors, bring your, your youth service chairs, and let's have a really great discussion with, with Barry Rassen. And so with that, I we're going to sign off. We are like one minute away. So again, thank you all for being with us tonight. I know you have many demands on your schedule, and it means a lot that we were able to come together like this. So be well and be safe, everyone. And we look forward to seeing you really, really soon. So take care, everyone. Thanks a lot for joining us, everyone, this evening for our first director dialogue with Director Valerie Wafer. Also, please be aware that we will post the uh, slide decks for those of you who are interested in seeing those slides on the Zones 28 and 32 website under the resources, or rather the webinars tab for director dialogue. So if you go to the website and look at the webinars tab, you will see director dialogue and we'll put the slide decks up there as well. Have a great holiday. We will see you back here in January. Bye everyone.